So good, uh, good afternoon or evening, everybody. Um, my name is Hakeem Weatherspoon. I'm the CEO of Exotanium. Um, I'm also the co-founder of Exotanium. And I'll show you in a second, but I'm also a professor at Cornell University. Uh, I'm actually, as a result, in the East Coast at uh, of the United States at Cornell in, uh, in New York. Uh, so here is 1030 AM. And so today I'm going to present uh, one of the keynotes, uh, Have Your Cake and Eat It, Reliably Running Stateful Application Containers in Cheap Spot Markets. All right. Uh, and so, as I said, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Exotanium. The other two co-founders are Robert Van Renesse, who is a professor as well, and Ziming Shen, who uh, this work that I'm going to present is based off of his PhD thesis. Robert and I were his uh, PhD advisor. Um, between the three of us, we have several uh, awards, uh, patents, and companies. Um, in fact, this is related to one of the cloud uh, uh, awards for uh, Symposium Cloud Computing that Ziming uh, won 10 years ago. Um, uh, excuse me, it was the paper was 10 years ago, and he actually won the award this year. Uh, I actually won an award for um, also a test of time award for cloud storage, a paper I had published uh, nearly 20 years ago in a paper called Ocean Store, and that talked about how to store a cloud worth of data uh, without losing any of it. And then Robert Varanese is one who we would call the, the godfather of the cloud, if you will. He, um, he actually hired Werner Vogels, um, the CTO of Amazon, and Werner worked for Robert uh, at Cornell. And then um, they had a startup company in the early 2000s that they then sold to Amazon. And uh, as part of that acquisition, Werner went to Amazon, became the CTO, and created Amazon Web Services. So we call Robert the Godfather. So in any case, so today, uh, I'd actually like to talk about something that um, we've been developing for quite some time. Um, and uh, just as background, make sure that we're all on the same page. So we're talking about infrastructure as a service clouds. So uh, this is where you, you can get virtual machines uh, on demand and seemingly unlimited number of them. So as much compute, storage, and networking as you want. And this is a pay-as-you-go model. And uh, everybody has started using this. In fact, uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft are making trillions of dollars. Uh, that's 12 zeros. The issue is uh, that, and this, sorry, this is uh, covered a bit, but the problem says that uh, businesses are spending billions of dollars uh, in the cloud, and much, much of them are spending um, as much as 50% of the revenue um, in the cloud itself. And so what we're going to want to do and discuss in this talk is how do we actually tame those costs, okay? And uh, the thing that we're going to use is what's called the spot market. The spot market are the same virtual machines, but can be up to 10 times cheaper. You can see here on the graph on the right, the price of different instance types uh, varying over time. And um, so as a result, you're going to want to use uh, the spot market if you can, because uh, it's going to be much cheaper. However, the issue is that uh, it's very unreliable. Uh, applications can be terminated at any time. Um, and as a result, uh, your application needs to be able to handle failure. So if you have a stateless application, one that you can auto scale or, re or restart at any time, that's perfect. If you have a stateful application or legacy application, uh, then you would never uh, use this. And just to make sure we're on the same page, the way to imagine a spot market and where it comes from is uh, just like a hotel room that's empty or an airplane seat that's empty. Uh, that's lost money for that uh, hotel or airline. And as a result, you have companies like Priceline that sell essentially those unused rooms or seats much cheaper. In the same way, um, the cloud has to have machines available to respond to anybody that wants to use them. If somebody wants 10,000 machines, it has to respond with 10,000 machines. As a result, those 10,000 machines are sitting there idle, wasting money. And um, so what they have done, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, all have their own versions of a spot market. 
is they sell the um, these unused machines much cheaper with the trade off that if somebody wants to pay the, pay the full price, then they will terminate your application and start running um, you know, a person that's able to pay full price. And so that's kind of the underlying uh, reason for this spot market. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use this spot market because it's cheap, but we're going to want to use it reliably. So how is it that we can mask the unreliability of the spot market? Furthermore, we're going to not uh, want to require any changes whatsoever of the application. And finally, we're going to want to achieve good performance. Uh, in summary, we're going to want to have our cake and eat it. We want it all. Okay. Uh, and so uh, the key here of what we're going to do is we're going to use a technique known as live migration. It comes with uh, Zen by default. So there's nothing um, special there. And there is some animation that uh, maybe I don't get. Huh. Okay. So unfortunately, I don't have an animation here, but the, there's animation that shows essentially, you know, you can uh, migrate a uh, instance um, from one um, machine to another. Uh, and if you were the cloud provider, you could do this at any time because you have installed the virtual machine monitor, the Zen hypervisor, and you can essentially migrate all the virtual machine state from one machine to another. So as a user, excuse me, as the owner of the physical machine, you can migrate a virtual machine anytime you want. As a user of the cloud, you cannot. <laughs> and this is because you don't have access to this underlying virtual machine monitor, or excuse me, or Zen hypervisor. So the question is, how do we then enable virtual machine migration at the user level if we are not the underlying provider? And so we're going to use the oldest trick in the book in computer science, which is we're going to add another level of indirection. Instead of starting a virtual machine um, uh, instance, uh, with an instance, we're going to start another virtual machine monitor. So uh, we've created a nested virtual machine uh, that we call Zen Blanket. This actually was discussed in a research paper that I wrote nearly 10 years ago. And you can see the reference here. The Zen Blanket virtualized once run uh, everywhere. And essentially what we're going to do is um, we're going to start a virtual machine a hypervisor uh, that we call Zen Blanket. And uh, then uh, within that, we're going to start a second layer virtual machine. So the FVM is the first layer virtual uh, machine and the SVM is the second layer virtual machine. And then what this is going to enable us to do is now all of a sudden we are going to be able to do everything the provider could do, which means that we can migrate all of the state, all of the virtual memory and registers related to um, the second layer virtual machine to another target location. Uh, so we can do everything that uh, the provider could do, even though we do not uh, own the underlying virtual machine. Okay. Um, and uh, everything is going to be um, migrated. I should say one thing is that uh, we're using for the second layer um, uh, pair of virtualized um, uh, operating systems, whereas um, you know, we're not going to be able to use the hardware virtualization for that second layer. So that's one uh, constraint. Okay. Um, let me go next slide here. And uh, this uh, works so well, it even works across um, different availability zones. So another paper that I wrote um, four, almost five years ago is a paper called the Super Cloud, a library cloud for exploiting cloud diversity. And here, it's the same trick works. You can migrate. Uh, you'd run Zen Blanket in another availability zone. And you could, um, as the owner of that second layer, so, you know, anybody can own these, uh, these virtual machines. You then would migrate all the state related to that second layer virtual machine to another availability zone. This works perfectly fine. Okay. Um, 
there are some constraints related to this. Uh, you would need to pay to migrate the state uh, across availability zones. Um, also, if you're accessing storage, you're not migrating that storage. And so you would still, those requests would still go across the different availability zones and that would um, cost money. However, you can actually migrate across not just availability zones, but different cloud providers. Um, if you go to supercloud.cs.cornell.edu, you can click on a demo there and see where we start an instance in, um, in Amazon, and then we migrate it live to Azure, and uh, then we migrate it live to Google Compute Engine, and then we migrate it live back to Cornell, uh, what we call the Red Cloud. We can migrate to any cloud we want live, okay? Um, and uh, But there are some constraints, like I said. So we actually do have a multi-cloud, which is uh, exactly what this super cloud is. Um, the last thing I'll say about this is, even though that capability is there, uh, it turns out that uh, it is expensive. Um, and you have to be very careful about uh, the storage, the networking, the, um, the scheduling. Uh, the super cloud actually has a solution for all of that. Uh, it has a storage layer, a, a way to use um, software-defined networking, uh, open vSwitch in order to um, to migrate uh, and maintain the same IP addresses. And, um, and also it uh, has a orchestration layer. All right, so that was, this has all been uh, research over the past 10 years so far. And then finally, um, we want to then get into uh, actually using the spot market using uh, this technique. So let's review um, a couple things about the spot market. Uh, number one is that um, the price varies over time. And so you can see a chart here with the price as low as nearly one tenth. And it also could be more expensive. So anything over one is more expensive. And so normally you would set a bid price and you would not use the spot market if it was more expensive than an on-demand instance. Um, the other thing is that the spot market varies based off of uh, instance type. And so you can see here um, two different families, the M3 uh, and, and C3 family, and then large and extra large within them. And you can see that uh, they all vary based off of uh, their own instance type and family, okay? And then finally, uh, a spot instance varies based off of availability zone. So you can see here the US East 1B, C, D, and E zones, availability zones, and the same exact instance type, the M3 uh, large in this particular case, varies differently based off availability zone. So as a result, you have um, the uh, price vary based off of time, uh, instance type and uh, availability zone, okay? And so we're gonna want to, really what we wanna do is at all times, run on the lowest uh, type and availability zone. And so that's what we're gonna wanna do. And so what uh, we then have created is what we call a smart spot instance. So we're gonna run the application in these second uh, layer VMs, okay? And then we're gonna migrate um, that second layer of VM uh, to a different target machine every hour based off the time, the, the price. So we're going to monitor uh, the price of instances and availability zones, and we're going to each hour potentially migrate. Um, <clears throat> the other thing to note is that uh, we will also um, only run the instance in one location. So after we migrate from the source, to the target, then we will terminate or destroy the source, okay? Um, and uh, there's a uh, statement there about um, performance. So I'll talk about that a little bit because uh, we're actually gonna wanna make sure that despite the overhead, uh, we're gonna wanna essentially minimize the overhead as well. And so uh, I'm gonna uh, show a um, experiment here of the price over time and what we're able to achieve. 
And this was talked about in another paper called a smart spot instance, uh, smart spot instances for the super cloud. And the references of all these papers are here and you can go and read up on any of these and um, also follow up with me if you have any uh, interest or questions or whatnot. So in this case, we're gonna run 10 um, applications that are all running a TPC web um, workload. It's, they're gonna run over 24 hours. We're gonna run them in one availability zone and we're gonna have uh, compare it to three instance types, the M3 large, extra large, and double extra large. Okay, and uh, so this, uh, if you focus on the top here, then you can see the price over time for um, the large in green, the extra large in blue, and then the uh, double extra large in like a maroon. And then you can see that when the price changes, there's a vertical blue line. And those are the times that we are gonna migrate. And so as a result, the super cloud um, and this is cumulative price over time. Uh, time is on the x-axis and a cumulative price is on the y-axis. You're going to see that the super cloud is at all times the cheapest. In fact, uh, if you had an Oracle, it would uh, be able to achieve within a constant factor that Oracle lowest price. And the difference between um, the super cloud price and uh, the um, extra large price is uh, three and a half uh, X in this example. Um, and the paper shows that we're able to achieve on average up to seven times uh, cheaper price. What about performance? So uh, this shows the web requests um, uh, that we're responding to per second uh, is a red line. The blue vertical line shows when we were doing the migration. And what you can see here is that the same performance was maintained over time. We were able to respond to all re web requests at the same rate um, despite migrating to uh, different um, different virtual machines uh, at a time. And just to go a little bit more into that, um, it's a normal uh, live migration. So there is a pre-copy phase and there's a couple rounds of that. And then there's a stop and copy. So all of that is still true in this case. The key here is that um, we're just minimizing that stop and copy time and it's running during that entire uh, pre-copy time. And so that's why you don't see any degradation in performance. Um, and then lastly, that stop and copy is a fraction of a second um, uh, such that we don't actually break the network connection at all. And we are migrating the uh, IP addresses. I'm not gonna go into that lower level techniques. You can actually read the Zen Lincoln paper to see um, some of the details there. Okay, uh, and uh, next, does this actually work for real? <laughs> um, nice research, you know, great job, uh, professor at Cornell after all. But what about uh, real applications of workload? Okay, so this is where uh, Exotanium comes in. So we've taken that technology that uh, I've demonstrated here, and um, we've seen, um, we've demonstrated that we can actually achieve a very high reliability um, while achieving a very low cost. And high reliability means that if you were to run in the spot market today, then you'd expect, um, you know, they actually give you the interruption rate of the previous month. So if it says five to 10%, you'd expect 50 to 100 terminations out of a thousand starts. Or um, if it said 10 to 20%, that'd be 100 to 200 we actually um, are able to mask uh, all of those. Uh, and I'll show you that in a second. So we're able to do that via seamless light migration. It's a plug and play. So it's a virtual machine and doesn't require any change of your application. Um, and then it's gonna work on any cloud, Amazon, Azure, Google, IBM, VMware. Okay, uh, there is a link in the chat to supercloud.cs.cornell.edu. Um, as a case study, we've done this for, um, you know, fairly uh, reputable companies, uh, Fortune 1000, that have uh, fairly challenging workloads. So uh, as you see here, stateful, long running, um, tens of CPU cores, hundreds of gigabytes of memory. And what we've achieved is a low cost, uh, reducing um, over 60%, nearly two thirds. 
in the performance overhead uh, of uh, less than 6%. So that means that if it took 10 hours for this particular run or set of runs, then it would take 10 hours and uh, 15 minutes, something that's in the noise for many of these applications. So this is a batch application. You can start it sometime later. What about interactive, if I had a server? Um, unfortunately, this is a demo that <laughs> I'm not able to play, but I can describe it a little bit. This is a, a normal three-tier application. So it has a database, a Redis database, which you can see here in red, uh, and a web server front end and load balancer and whatnot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna migrate the stateful Redis database. And this shows the green line is a web request per second. The red lines in the, is the errors. And uh, you can see the, um, the second layer of virtual machine running um, here on the top right. And if I was able to show the demo, what you would see is that I would migrate the uh, virtual machine, second layer virtual machine live from the spot market, spot instance to the regular instance. And it would be almost magic. Um, uh, it would not stop at all. The green line would continue to run and respond and there would be no errors. Uh, and then I would migrate it back. <laughs> so that's the demo that you would see here. And the entire time, um, it would, it would run and respond. Uh, and we are maintaining the same network connections. Um, the, uh, I, hopefully you're able to do Someone said, can you share this screen? Unfortunately, it should be shared. Uh, let me know if you're not able to see the screen share. Um, the demo is not there, unfortunately. So that's the issue is I described it, but wasn't able to um, actually show it. Uh, and so let me go ahead and, and actually uh, show another slide or two and then uh, wrap up. Um, so we have uh, been running this for several months now. And what we have achieved is that uh, over several months, the last four months, uh, this says two months, but we actually have added a couple months since uh, since then, uh, that uh, we've actually have avoided hundreds of potential terminations and not been terminated once, okay? This is unprecedented. <laughs> There's no way you could run a stateful application in the spot market and expect to run for um, certain days and certain, not not weeks, but definitely not months, and not expect to be terminated. And so we actually have done that for long running jobs. This shows for the M5 extra large. We have done this for many different types of instances. Okay, and finally, uh, let me conclude, and I'll take some questions. Uh, we have demonstrated that you can tame the spot market using uh, live uh, migration. Seamless live migration. Um, this works for application containers and virtual machines. It's based off of uh, research, open research over the last 10 years. Uh, we have our, have commercialized this and enabled this to work in production environments. Um, and the name of the product is Xbot. Um, and so you can contact us here if you'd like a demo or contact me. Also, if you're interested, uh, we are Love Zen developers, um, and we are hiring. We're growing uh, quite a bit. Okay, so uh, with that, you can then see the paper trail of the research papers that we have written and published. Uh, and then with that, I'll go ahead and conclude and say thank you and see if there are any questions. I think we have five minutes for, for questions or so. Um, so I can read off some of the questions in the chat. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to unmute or not, but uh, someone asked that uh, maybe they missed it, but I think it still doesn't actually deal with termination problem. I mean, uh, you still suffer data loss in that case. So true, uh, if you get terminated, you would potentially lose the data. So let me say a couple things. Number one is we're playing essentially a game of whack-a-mole. So we are avoiding termination. Um, we're, we are migrating before you get terminated at all. And, and actually, we're not actually waiting for that two-minute warning. Uh, there's other stuff that we do in order to predict when to migrate, and we'll migrate ahead of time. 
this is why we're able to migrate very large uh, instances. We can migrate up to a terabyte instance that may take 20 minutes. Um, and we've been able to achieve the same result, which is many months without termination. The other thing that we actually uh, have is the ability to write checkpoints. Um, in some sense, that is what a migration is anyways, is just writing checkpoints. Uh, and so you could uh, write, you know, potentially maintain continuous checkpoints. There's a cost to that. So there's always a cost trade-off of, uh, of doing that. But uh, if you did, then uh, you would potentially be able to resume after you were terminated. You would not maintain the same network connections for the most part if that were to happen. Um, there's another question, how do you maintain state from the first instance to the second? Um, so a couple things. Number one is that we have a uh, first layer um, instance, and within that we start a, a hypervisor. That hypervisor essentially is an abstraction of the machine. So we actually at that point own all registers um, and all state. And that's why we, even though we're the user of the cloud, are able to do everything a, a cloud provider is able to do. And we can move all registers, all memory, to anywhere we want because, um, you know, with the whole split driver and everything, everything goes through domain uh, DOM zero and we control the world. <laughs> All your bits are belong to us. Um, and so that's, you know, that's essentially, there's not, in some sense, there's nothing special there. What's special is we're able to do it in a performant way um, on a second layer, okay? Uh, and this, this says, how do you know when to migrate? There's a number of inputs that she would take. So certainly that warning that Amazon gives you, for example, two minute warning, um, there's different uh, signals on. The The issue is that the um, the interruption rate is stale, uh, but there's there's other signals that we take in. And essentially that's kind of the, the secret sauce is figuring out when to migrate. And so we've uh, mastered that in, in some sense. Actually not in some sense, we mastered that. Uh, overall. Um, so that's a good question there. I think that we have one minute left. Um, <laughs> somebody said they're asking for the secret sauce. Well, uh, we would love for you to come uh, join us. This I should say that this is, um, a lot of this is open. Uh, you know, I'll put my professor hat on. I'm a professor in uh, computer science in computer systems and networking. I've been in the field for over 20 years. Uh, my dissertation is based off of distributed storage, and I have results in storage and operating systems in networking. And so we believe very strongly in uh, in the open source community. So we have contributed to that. Um, at the same time, uh, uh, open is actually a great avenue, uh, open source, for, uh, for com commercial businesses. Um, there's always, I don't know if it's uh, Solomon has said it, but free is not uh, open and free is not necessarily free um, in terms of making a business. So that's what we're doing right now is we're figuring out how to make a profitable business out of it, uh, is, uh, uh, which we're being you know, quite successful at right now. And so, uh, yeah, the exact details are proprietary. So uh, in any case, uh, there's, um, I think that we're just about out of time. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, you can contact me at CEO at exotanium.io. If you are interested in a demo, you can contact me as well. If you're interested in potentially working with us, uh, contact me directly or send an email to, to hiring. So with that, I just wanna say thank you. This is a great opportunity to sponsor uh, the Zen Summit and to be part of the, the conversation here. Thank you.